Hi, my name is Caroline, and this video is about 3D printing face shields for hospitals during the COVID-19 crisis. On this video, I'm going to focus on printing the frames for the shields, where to get the designs, and my settings in Cura. With the COVID-19 crisis, there is a huge shortage of what they call PPE, personal protective equipment. I have personally spoken with medical professionals working in hospitals that say that they are not being provided with any PPE or they get one N95 mask total. PPE that is single use is now being stretched to a lot of uses. I am now volunteering with a local organization called Atlanta Beats COVID or the acronym ABC. And I also want to mention my friends at the Spaghetti Detective are compiling a list of resources, including local organizations that you can volunteer with. I hope that you'll consider volunteering with your local organization. I will leave a link in the description field below. They are also offering more Spaghetti Detective hours if you volunteer to make face shields for your community. Check it out. If you don't know what the Spaghetti Detective is, I'll link to the video where I explain all of that in grave detail. Now let's talk about 3D printing face shields. There are a bunch of different designs out there. I'm working with Atlanta Beats COVID, ABC, and they have settled on three different designs. You can print any of these designs that you want and then drop off your prints at their specified locations. Now this one is, has a, like a shield visor type and then this one doesn't have that shield on there and then you would put the clear plastic part. Now, obviously you'll notice that these shields have a clear plastic part to cover the face. Fortunately, ABC has secured pallets worth of industrial plastic needed to finish the shields. They have industrial equipment at their maker spaces to cut the clear plastic for the shields. Now let's talk about materials. They prefer PETG material, but according to their website, they will happily accept PLA. With everybody printing frames, there is a bit of a shortage on PETG as of the recording of this video. I ordered PETG from Prusa and it is on its way to me from Prague as we speak. Now, let me start my screen record and I'll show you how to get the files. Now, for me, I am on the Atlanta Beats COVID website here. And from here, I'm gonna go to DIY and then it shows you the designs and the projects that they're working on. They are um, partnering with sewing masks for Atlanta hospitals. They're working on medical isolation gowns. And right here, they are 3D printing full face shield. I'm gonna hit make it. And here are the three models that you can print. Now there is the Prusa model, which is by far the most popular model. If you want to go for an NIH approved model and NIH standing for National Institute of Health, they have a model that has that visor that I just showed you and you can make that. So those are the two that I've focused on. Unfortunately, my little ANET A8 3D printer is the plate is just too small to print this NIH visor with wraparound arms. So I'm not printing that one. So let's go into the Prusa one. I'll hit make it. And here you go. Um, it shows you what the, what it looks like. Now I do want to kind of note at this point that there is the top part right here, as you can see. And the picture that you see on there is a, it, they went through several iterations before they just decided on this particular model. So if you look at my screen, there are holes on the part that touches the head in this picture. They've kind of gone away from that at this point. Then you'll also notice there's a bottom piece too. And uh, this goes at the bottom of the clear shield and it provides a little bit of reinforcement. So there are actually two pieces that you need to print to make this face shield. Now I'm going to hit the download button and then it just drops you down into the files and you can select from the files here. Now, you want to look for RC3 or the latest version. So as I mentioned before, they are going through several different iterations of the design, you know, based on feedback from the hospitals. For the purposes of this video, the latest design is RC3. I'm going to download that one. And then I'm also going to scroll down and I am going to download bottom underscore reinforcement.stl. Those are the two main files that I need. 
And this is what I would recommend that you start with if you're going to do this at your home. And I hope that you will be firing up your 3D printer to help your community in the fight against COVID-19. All right. The other thing I'd like to note is that they do have a U.S. version. Um, I'm currently not printing the U.S. version. My understanding is that this U.S. version is a three-hole punch version. And I also want to point while I'm on this uh, website here, there is a sterilization process and it says how to sterilize the face shield. Now, for my purposes working with ABC, I'm not going to sterilize my pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put them all in one big bag or one big box and then deliver them to ABC and then they will put on the clear part and they will sterilize them before they get it out to the end use customer. Uh, your next question is probably what are the settings I need to print? How much infill, you know, how many layers do I need? All right. I'm going back to the Atlanta Beats COVID site. And if you keep on scrolling down, they have their preferred print settings specifications, and they've got a layer height. They have how many shells, the infill, all that good stuff. We are going to go into our Cura. So here's my Cura and I'm going to take headband and I've got the little bottom piece here and I'm going to drop this into my Cura. The other thing I want to note while we're in Cura before we get started here is you can, you want to check to see if you have the latest version of Cura. So you go into extensions, update checker, check for updates. I've got the latest version. If you haven't set up Cura before, I highly recommend that you check out another video. I'll link to it below on how to set up Cura. I also use Octoprint. I've done a couple videos on Octoprint to be able to send print jobs to my printer. I'm not gonna cover that in, vid in this video. I'm gonna assume that you've already done that. I've got my two pieces here. I'm gonna click on the headband. I'm just gonna move that over to right here. And then we're gonna turn this around and you are going to see what this looks like. I do want to note that I have an Anet A8. The build plate is 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters, uh, 22 centimeters by 22 centimeters. I think that is about the minimum size you need in order to print this particular design out because it's almost to the edge. Uh, so you want to make sure your build plate that you are able to print all the way out to the edge. And so here's one full print right here. So this is one shield. I'm going to hit the little pencil icon and I'm now going to go through the settings. Do you have these default settings? I'm going to set mine to extra fast and then I'm going to look at the requirements based on the ABC website and it says all right layer height 0.3 millimeters or better shells at least three so I'm going to hit I'm going to change two to three and then it says infill 30% or higher. So I'll change that 30%. It also wants the infill to be type to be grid. I will change that to grid. Also, I think I saw somewhere on here that they want the thickness to be 0.9 millimeters as well. Okay. And then let's talk about printing temperature. Now, if you're printing in PLA, a lot of that is done at 200 degrees. If you're printing in PETG, you're going to want to print a little bit higher. I believe that PETG prints around 240, 250 there. Make sure you've got your uh, print temperature right. Make sure you've got your uh, build plate temperature correct. You also want to have your print speed um, set to 60 or lower according to that. And then you want to enable retraction as usual. Cooling. Yes, you want to have cooling. We do not print with supports on here. I've I've been able to print this out with no supports and it has worked great. And then I prefer to print with a skirt. Now I've got a pretty good build plate. I am able to do this with just a skirt um, on a build plate. So that's worked out really well for me. So those are my settings. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my profile here, create a profile, and I'm going to call this my Prusa face shield settings. I'm going to hit OK. So that is my Prusa face shield settings. So now I've got that already done and I'm going to hit slice and it's slicing now. And I'm going to hit print with Octoprint. Mine doesn't automatically start printing. So there are settings that you can set on here and that's part of setting up Cura the way you want to set it up. So in manage printers, you can say, all right, connect to Octoprint. Mine is connected 
to Octoprint and I have automatically start print job after uploading, I have that unchecked because I don't want it to automatically start the print job after printing. All right, so that's just, that's my thing. You wanna make sure you've got all your machine settings right. You wanna make sure everything is the way you want it to be. So you wanna make sure you have your print settings correct. So you should have all set that up when you set up your Cura in the first place, hopefully. And that is how you print the basic file. So those are the basic files. I'm gonna clear my build plate now. Let's go back to the ABC website. This is the NIH approved proofs of remix with visor. And so you can see it here, you can hit download. The process is the same. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hit the STL. I'm gonna download the STL file and then go back to my Cura, go back to my downloads and there it is and drag and drop it and there it is. And if you wanna add the bottom reinforcement, yep, you wanna drop that in there as well and make sure it is part of the print. Move that, make sure it's there and then you can hit slice and you've got your settings saved. So I believe these are the same settings whether you print with the visor or not. That is done now. Then I wanna clear my build plate. I suggest just printing one just to get started. Now let's go back to the Prusa face shield, the original face shield. You can print you know, a stack of two or stack of four as well. From the Prusa website, there's called stacked versions of the shield. Click here and you hit download and then you can print double. So that's two face shields or you can print quadruple, four face shields to show you what this looks like. Let's go back to Finder. So this is the double. This is what this looks like, just to show you. And then remember to put in the bottom reinforcement. And then you probably wanna multiply your model. You wanna make sure everything is on the build plate. Move it right there and hit slice. And that will take a little bit longer to print as well. So let's let that slice. And then you can print with Octoprint. And then I'm gonna clear that build plate. Last but not least, let's look at the quad. And that is, that's what that looks like. So that's going to take a while to print. So if you are doing an overnight print or you just got a while you can do, this is what I recommend. Yeah, they do have how to assemble the face shield. And then, you know, of course, Octoprint, hopefully you have to set that up. If not, then you'll have to save this to your micro SD card and then put it in your printer. Um, if you have an A net A8 like I do. Now, I do have friends that are in the medical field that have approached me personally. And yes, of course I take care of my friends. I bought a hundred transparency sheets that I use to finish my friend's shield. Also at the Makerspace, they provide elastic for the back of these shields. For my friends, I couldn't find any elastic. I bought a pack of seven inch rubber bands and that is what I use. Before I go, I'd also like to mention that I was interviewed on a local news station, CBS Atlanta, to demo the face shields that I was printing on my 3D printer. If you'd like to see that interview, I will put a link in the description field below as well. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you stay safe and healthy. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye now.